Happy Labor Day, everyone. Welcome to Lunch with Linda. Today we are live, but we are not at the store. So you're not inside Northampton Wolves. You are inside my office. Now, I'm bearing my soul to all of you because those of you that know me well know that I am not the most organized person. My daughter will have testified to that and Adrian is here helping today with this video. But the reason is I need to see what I have in order to know what I have to do. So as we move around my very big office today, um, don't be shocked at what you see. I know exactly where everything is and I know exactly what I'm doing with it. So um, this back here, we're gonna start today in my little sewing corner. I have my sewing machine and lights, all my thread. You can see even more thread in the boxes, but you don't need to see it all. This isn't really gonna be a tour. Um, I just wanted to come on today because we have tons of things to talk about and I need every single Monday in order to be able to share all of it with you because I wanna make sure that all of you know what's going on, what we're doing, and now is the time when we really need to start throwing out tips and tricks for all of your fall um, and winter knitting. So with that in mind, I want to show you, tell you that this week is gonna be a very busy week for me. If you had a chance to go to the Three County Fair, I was able to judge all of the knitted and crocheted items there. If you got a chance to go into the building and see all of the ribbons that people won, um, and you think that you should probably do that too, I encourage you. It's too late, of course, to enter either the Big E or the Three County Fair now. They've already happened. But it's something to put on your calendars for next year. Because in July and in August, that's when both of those places um, put out the entry forms. You can fill out a form and enter something in either one of those. Now, why would you want to? First of all, if you enter something in either one of those fairs, you're going to get a ticket to get into the fair when it's going on for free, including the Big E. And that at the Big E, that alone is a $15 um, savings right there. If you enter something and it wins a ribbon, you're going to get some sort of payment for that from the state. The t fairs pay different rates, so it could be as much as $8 for a blue ribbon, and then five and then three, that's about standard. So if you win a ribbon, you could end up with a nice little paycheck in addition to that free ticket. And then um, the other thing that you should know is that I trained to be a judge with the Knitting Guild of America. And um, we use something called the Swedish judging method, which means that in both knitting and crochet, we have standards of excellence. And as long as each item um, measures up to those standards, it is judged accordingly. So you're not being judged against anything else that's entered. Each item is being judged according to the standards. So you don't have to worry about being com in competition if your sister enters something or your best friend, because you're not. You are in competition with the standards. So it's really kind of a fun um, thing to do. My very first time before I was even teaching at Northampton Wolves, entering things in the Three County Fair, it was such a thrill to walk into the building and see blue ribbons on three or four of the things that I um, had done. So this year I am the crochet judge down at the Big E. So anybody that's entered anything in the crochet department, I will be looking at and judging against the crochet standards. So um, when you go to the Big E and you see maybe five Afghans and all of them have a blue ribbon, it's because each one of those Afghans met the criteria for a blue ribbon according to the standards that we have to use. What we do end up choosing, where the competition comes in, is in the best in show. And there are a bunch of different criteria for that and a bunch of different best ofs. So um, we do a gift certificate for the best use of stitch patterns in both knit and crochet. You will end up with a special gift certificate and a special award 
um, for a best of kind of placement. So you will see items that have bigger ribbons and um, best of kind of things. So it's a big month for crochet for me with judging at the biggie and um, a lot of the crochet items that people have knit. The other big thing that happens this week is the Hill Institute up in Florence has sign up for classes on Saturday. If you check out the hillinstitute.com website, you will see a listing of all of the classes. It is an adult education program that's been going on for years and years and years. And now you can do, take classes in woodworking, canoe making, weaving. You can do classes in knitting, crocheting, and all kinds of sewing and quilting, jewelry making, painting, photography, tons of different classes. And the reason I'm mentioning it that this year is because I teach crochet at the Hill Institute. My class is on Wednesday night from five to seven, and you need to sign up on Saturday. If you can't get to the Hill on Saturday between nine and 10.30, give me a call Wednesday at the shop and I can discuss how you can sign up through me. The other thing that's happening that's really special this year, I'm going to be doing a one day class in October. And Adrian and I are gonna switch places right now. The Hill Institute is connected with the Cordicilli silk mills that used to be in Florence. They were started by, the, the school was started by Mr. Hill who owned the silk mills. And in the early 1900s, they put out a bunch of pattern booklets for crochet and some for knit that used the silk that they made at their mill. When, they, when the Hill was cleaning out some of their um, stuff up in the attic, they found one of the original copies of the Corticelli silk, silk bag pattern books. And um, I was just thrilled because they were really, really amazing and fun. So the class is going to be one day, Friday, October 21st, all day from 10 to three up at the Hill Institute. You will get a copy because I'm printing out copies of the entire booklet um, that has, I think, probably 15 different bags, patterns in it. And we're gonna do that class in that one day. I have spent a few um, hours reproducing some of those bags. Now, I, we're not gonna be working with the really skinny silk that originally these patterns were done. Um, I am going to be putting together kits with lots of leftover silk yarn that I have. So the bags that we make will end up being more like this rather than these tiny little bags. What I love about the magazine or the booklet is how each description, there's a pattern in there for a bag that's big enough to hold opera glasses or a bag that's big enough to hold your gloves or a tissue or a handkerchief. Um, but we're gonna be making them much bigger. So you're going to learn how to do the color work um, in many of these bags. This one I made out of a multicolor and it has a drop stitch pattern in it. And then this one again is the multicolor with a slightly different stripe to it. So you'll be able to choose any of the patterns in the booklet and then um, you'll be able to buy a kit. I will have kits available that are made out of silk but it's a heavier silk than it was. So again, if you can't make, sign up for that class will be on Saturday up at the Hill Institute. And if you can't make it, call me at the store and um, we'll make arrangements. I would need a check from you and your name and phone number and I'll be able to sign you up um, for that class. Um, since I'm up here, I also wanted to talk about, now Adrian, you're gonna have to switch around again, um, to switch places with me. This poncho, this poncho is crocheted and I've got it on my dress form here, but we also have a knit one. I'm gonna take the camera, Adrian, you're gonna put the pink one on. These are going to be the free patterns this month for September. Um, Adrian's putting on the knit poncho. You're going to get the pattern for both the crochet and the knit um, poncho. 
and I wanted to show them to you to sort of preview them. The email is going to go out tomorrow night with the patterns, and um, you'll, of course, have a direct link to the yarn that I used. So if you want to grab that yarn, that ball of yarn right there, the mohair, yep. So I used one skein of the silk hair print. I'm going to turn this around so that you can see Adrian and the backdrop of my office. Again, this is actually my work table where I make sure I put everything that I need to do out. That's why it looks like that. Anyway, Adrian is holding a skein of the silk hair haze print. It has 400 and something yards. I think it's 440 yards. And one skein made the poncho that she has on. So you want to turn around, sweetie? Thank you. Beautiful. It is a very lightweight, but warm, right? Little poncho and really, really easy. Both the knit and the crochet are simply rectangles, which you then fold in half. So um, there's the seam. Fold it in half and you, oh, I keep, I keep getting my finger in there. Um, fold it in half and you seam um, a part of it towards the fold. Now, you, if you take it off, Adrian, we can show you. And hi, everybody. Um, you know, that's a good question, I think, Eileen. I don't know that the standards are available. I would have to look that up and see if they are. So, so this is a rectangle, and Adrian's hand over there, yep, that's where the seam starts, and it sews towards the fold where her other hand is, right there. And then you leave about 12 to 13 inches at the top open. And that's the knit one and the crocheted one. I'm just going to grab it off. There. So the pink one is just stocking that stitch. It's a lace weight mohair on a size seven or eight needle. The crocheted one is two rows of double crochet and three rows of single crochet. And again, it's a simple rectangle that you then fold in half. These one skein projects are wonderful. I agree, Holly, because we all fall in love with that one specialty yarn that maybe isn't really what we want to make an entire sweater out of, um, but it definitely is something that we want to use. So these one skein things are just great. I'm going to turn it around and give this back to Adrian. Um, so those patterns will come out in tomorrow's email and um, I will link it right to the yarn so you can see what all the colors that it comes in are. Uh, it is a multicolored yarn, so you're going to get that kind of erratic striping effect in it or like in this one, more of a more of a regular stripe in it. Um, but I think it really blends really well and really shows um, the yarn off really well. Again, it's a very simple knit, just stocking net stitch on a big needle. The hardest thing about this is going to be getting used to working with that thin yarn. You just need to get a feel for it um, on the large needles to make sure that you don't drop a stitch or miss a stitch. When I was knitting it, I find it much better to work with bamboo needles with that thin mohair. The metal needles are just too slippery and you will be more inclined to lose stitches that way. So make sure you have bamboo needles if you're going to do that project. Let me just look at my notes for a second. Yeah, that's gonna be next. And... Okay, I the other thing that I'm doing in the email is a list of classes. I've spent part of this weekend putting together a bunch of different things. Let's switch around. A bunch of different things that I want to um, do classes in. And um, so our first two months of that stuff will end up being in the email. I worked a little bit more on the bookish cardigan. Finally got back to it. This is how much I've got done. A long time ago, can't even remember how long ago, we got the yarn from the Fiber Shed, which is wool from three different farms in Western Mass. And I started working on the bookish cardigan. Picked it up again, I had only done about this much. And yesterday I worked through a couple repeats. So I'm almost at the underarm um, for this sweater. So this is one of the classes that I'm going to be doing, one of our knit along kind of classes. And then, 
I also finished this weekend a Christmas stocking and I am going to do in November, we're going to do a design your own Christmas stocking. So if you take that class, I'm going to give you a whole bunch of different charts with a basic Christmas stocking pattern in it. And you'll be able to put in whatever charts you want to use on your Christmas stocking. So look for that one as well. So I also wanted to talk about one thing. I put together this sweater for a customer. This is real. This is not more than my office. It's also very much where I do all of my work. So this sweater came to me in pieces and I have um, finished putting together and now it needs to be blocked. Cables really suck in. They really pull together. And although this woman is small, um, the cables need to, the whole thing needs to be blocked out so that it can, um, so that it can relax a little bit. And I wanted to show you guys this. Often I use my iron, an iron and a damp towel, but I ended up getting one of these steamers. So the water tank goes in here. This is a Rowenta, by the way, and it's a pretty heavy duty one. There's an on and off switch. I just turned it on. And when the blue light stops flashing, it's gonna um, really start steaming. And I wanted to show you the difference. I've already steamed this half of the piece and this part of the collar. And you can see how the cables are still deep on this side and the blocked side, the stocking net stitch part has really begun to smooth out. I really like the steamer too for the seams for really helping to set and clean up um, the steams as well. We're almost ready because I'm going to do this. Here we go. Blue light is on and no longer flashing. And look at that steam. This is not a travel thing. If you have a steamer that you travel with, this is not that, this is a bit bigger. So we're gonna steam this side now and it really works well vertical. So I have the sweater pinned to one of the um, rubber mats that we use. We've got some of these for sale. They do come in big packages in stores, but if you don't really want to um, buy 10 of these mats, you can get two of them for $5 at the store. So I am just going to let the steam soak through the cables to just open the stocking net stitch and the purl stitches between them. Open it up a little bit and I'm not really pressing on it, but I do have to pick it up. I can't get down to the bottom. Sorry, it's dark. It's a dull day, everybody, right? So we just let the steam really soak through everything. So it does make a little bit of wetness, and then I'm just going to turn it off. It does make it a little bit wet, so I need this piece to just sit right where it is until it's completely dry. This is different than wet blocking. When you wet block, some, wet block something, you can really pin it out. Not everything needs to be wet blocked like this. If I wet blocked this, I was afraid that it was gonna come out too big. Like I said, she's a very tiny woman and I really don't want the sweater to grow any more than it has to. But if I showed you this before it was pinned, it was only about this big. It was really sucked in and really, really tiny. So it's gonna look a lot better when she comes to pick it up when we when we have it um, blocked out a little bit like this. So if you don't have one of these, you might wanna think about getting one. I use it a lot. I used it on the Christmas stocking as well. Even though I did wet block this, it needed a little um, press kind of finish, a little steam finish to it um, afterwards. So if if you see one of those, grab it because it. I also used it on all of the ponchos. So it was because these didn't really need to be blocked, but it, it did get a little bit wrinkled, all kind of mushed up in my bag. So I put these on my dress form and then just shot them with the steam and it really evened them out. I like it too. You know, you store your sweaters, I fold mine up. And when I take them out, sometimes those fold lines are still in there. 
This is perfect for getting rid of those fold lines without having to rewash or wear the sweater with the fold lines. If you just put it on a towel um, and steam it, it gets really hot. So my caution there would be be very careful. I have I have tried to use it by and holding something out while I steam, and I've come close to burning myself a couple of times. So be very careful with that. All right, I think we're down to the last thing that I wanted to show you um, that I put a little tease in about yesterday. And this is a shawl that, oh, let me just pick that up. Okay, so this is a shawl that Willa made and I finished blocking it, but noticed that this last stitch was really stretched out and it happens a lot. So here is what it would look like if it was really on the needles. Now, I, there are a lot of people who are talking about this. Maybe you've even seen it and maybe you even do it. But instead of just, are you upside down, Adrian? No, oh, sideways, okay. my sideways. All right. Instead of just knitting into that and binding it off, that's what I want. That's it. Instead of just knitting into that and binding it off, and then we have this big stitch right here, what you want to do is look for the knot right underneath the stitch, which is right there. And see what happens when I grab the knot, how it pulls that stitch up smaller? I'm gonna pull that up and put it on the left-hand needle. And then I'm going to knit those two together and bind off the last stitch and then stick the yarn through the last stitch and pull. And now that stitch is not so stretched. It's still big because I've really been um, playing with this and letting it hang but we can grab the stitches next to it and share that wealth all along that row a little bit. So we don't have that great big hunk and hole at the end. Um, so that's my tip, is to pull, find that knot and pull the knot up and put it on the needle and then knit those two together and you'll be ready to bind them off. All right. Now this shawl, this is the one that Willa had on over her hat to mimic the one that was on the cover of Lane Magazine, which by the way is coming. The new Lane, the new Lane Magazine, it's issue 15, has already been shipped and on its way to me. However, we can't sell it until the 16th, but I will be showing you. Um, that magazine probably next week. If you go on Ravelry, um, they are posting pictures of the patterns in it, and boy, does it look like a good magazine. Also, the Pom Pom magazine we have in, that we can sell right now, and that is a really great issue with some really interesting construction of things. Um, so look for both of those new magazines. A new color from Smooshy. And we got in, we did, Adrian's reminding me, we got in the new color from Smushy, but next week I'll be showing you some of the new yarns that have, that will find their way into the store. We've gotten a couple of little orders, but the big orders are starting to come next week. So look for that. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoy your Labor Day. I feel like I've had a wonderfully long weekend because I took Saturday off. Adrian very kindly worked for me so I have the rest of today and then still tomorrow and then I'll be in the shop on Wednesday. So if you've got questions um, or you are going to be out and about, I won't be in the store on Thursday. Adrian will be there. Like I said, I'll be down at the Big E and then Saturday morning I won't be in until a little bit later because the registration up at the Hill goes until 1030. Otherwise, I will be there all week, and um, I hope you guys have a wonderful week, rest of the weekend and find plenty of time to go knit something. Bye, everybody. Thanks for tuning in.